Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to talk about engraving. Not laser engraving, stuff like that. We're going to talk about hand engraving. Engraving that'll let you do things like this. That's just some examples, certainly not my work, but we're going to talk about the basics of engraving. I'm not going to teach you guys how to engrave. I am far, far away from that. I am barely a beginner at this. But what I did do is a bunch of investigation when I wanted to get into engraving, what equipment I needed, what the parts were, how to get started. So I'm going to pass that info on to you guys. And if there'll be links down in the description for where I got my stuff and you guys can go get some more knowledge there. So let's go down to the table and I'll take you into it. Regular viewers will recognize this as uh, the sword I'm working on for the build videos uh, for Sunday. Uh, but this is an example um, of where I'm going to use some engraving. So I want to engrave this copper on both sides with some pattern elvish writing. I'm not really sure yet what I want to, to do with it, but it's going to go all the way around. And I really think... Um, you know, engraving to me kind of ups your game. This is like beyond the beginner, beyond the intro. We're into the immediate and advanced aspects of knife making. So I'm always trying to push myself. So that's why I want to do it on this project. So let's talk about the equipment. So when we talk about hand engraving, um, I'm going to be talking about a pneumatic engraver. Not the kind where you take the graver and you take the hammer and you're chiseling it. Not that kind of engraving. Um, that's very, very difficult and very error prone. Um, so what I'm talking about is using one of these. And this is just a pneumatic air fed um, uh, engraver. Okay, uh, air. It has a piston inside. And the air will make that piston go up and down a whole bunch of times a second. You have a graver, which is a sharpened um, chisel, basically, sharpened at very specific angles, and we'll talk about that. And you hold this. This particular one has a bunch of features, which I'll go over, um, but it has a foot pedal, and that increases the amount that that piston is going up and down, and that's actually what causes it to move. So I'll go into more details and basics on the engraver. Um, engra hand engravers like this are pretty expensive. Uh, <laughs> if you know me, <laughs> you know, for, for tools that I know I'm going to use, I don't like to skimp on the tools and buy something cheap. So I went and bought uh, a Lindsay Air Graver, um, which is I th pretty much one of the best on the market. Um, they have ones, um, they have definitely more expensive ones than this that don't have the foot pedal that have kind of a pressure with your palm. They're called palm gravers uh, from the same company. But um, I decided to go with, with this one just to get into it. Uh, this one alone with the uh, sharpening set for gravers was um, $1,800. So US, so not a cheap thing to get into. So there's the, the, the engraver, uh, the air graver is what this one's called, um, with a hose. This hose gets connected to a regulator. And all this comes with the kit. So this regulator will regulate um, the PSI coming out of your compressor. And it's just a regular air compressor, the same one I use for, for other tools. Um, there's a power switch. Um, and there's some, some idling settings because uh, you want some air to come out of this, and I'll show you guys later, when even it's not being used, you'll see it, you'll hear it hiss just a little bit. So I just like to hang this up here so it's out of the way. Uh, and then of course the foot pedal will go on the ground so you have easy access to it. So next, and probably one of the most important pieces did not come with the kit, I had to buy this separately, is an engraving vise or a ball vise. So this, the, the special aspect of this, I'll turn it sideways here, is the bottom is, is quite heavy. Uh, and that's the difference between buying a cheap one and a good one. Uh, and then the top, what you see, it rotates and spins quite easily. And the, the, 
the the um, process here, let me get a key just to open this up. You will place your work between, you know, in the chuck here. Just, all right, I'll, I'll put that in later, but um, you'll place your work in the chuck. Let's say it was like this here. I'll get a blank side. Okay, so it's solid there now. I was just using this little piece of round tube here, or square tube rather. Um, as you're engraving, you're, you're moving your work. You're not trying to do this with the engraver. That's why these are so important, to do these fancy scrolls and, and leaves and stuff, the and patterns that you see here, you're moving the work. So whatever hand you have the engraver in, I'm right-handed, so the engraver's in my right hand, and I'm spinning the work with my left. So very, very important. Um, critical, as a matter of fact, I, I don't think you can engrave very well without one of these. This one was about $600. And this is, a, again, one of the top of the line GRS, uh, makes very good ball vices. Um, yes, you can get these on Amazon for 40 bucks. The big difference is gonna be the weight. This one is 26 pounds. Okay, the ones on Amazon are four pounds. So you will be pushing the vise around as you um, try to engrave. So they're not really good for that purpose. Um, this one is meant for engraving. You can even lock the top if you don't want it to spin. And it's just sitting on, I think this is what it came with. It looks like a, almost like a spare a tire off a, um, off a lawnmower. I don't know what it is, but you can sit it in this and it doesn't really move. And then if you want to, it's got these others, so it moves a bit easier if you want to change your angle. So, pretty cool. So let's talk about um, engravers, or sorry, gravers. So, and I'll try to come in here, see if you can see that. So a graver is really just a special um, and these are high-speed steel, um, and you can see it's a very, very kind of unique angle. And this one comes to a point and then has this little scoop area, and that's how you're going to make those nice lines. Uh, there are different styles uh, of, of gravers for different purposes. There are flat ones. There are um, different angles. So in addition to... Uh, graver and this one this graver came like this already ground is You need a way to sharpen your gravers. That is absolutely key. You must You must engrave with a sharp graver if you don't your work will suffer and It just looks like crap <laughs> so um, what um, Steve Lindsay uh, has provided um, is a, a really really good way to sharpen gravers. And these are, um, here I'll pull out one of these here. So what you do is they, there's a special little collet. Um, I'm not gonna pretend that you take the graver out, you put it in this collet, you put the collet on this um, on this contraption here. So pretend that's that's it. You lock it like this. What this does is you lean it onto the stone, rub it back and forth and Every side of this is exactly the sides that you need here. So it's a really ingenious way to sharpen a graver perfectly every time because it puts every one of those faces on it for you. And then the small one um, is to do the initial, like the, the really long sweeping faces, uh, to do those. This one does the kind of the sharpening facets if... Uh, if you understand what I mean. So very, very cool. And I, I made sure I got the sharpening set with it. So um, I'm sure there's other ways to sharpen gravers. I can't imagine getting anything simpler. So just a little bit about um, the reasons I went with this graver. And one of them is this one is a really unique um, way. Kind of, you think of it kind of like your adjustment on a Venturi burner is you can open, see it's got air holes here. 
you can open this and close this and it will provide more or less air to the piston. So with one setup, you can not only adjust the air from the regulator, you can adjust it right here and get it to the point where you could do really almost microscopic engraving, like really, really fine engraving with um, the same tool. And uh, it, it's got, it's very, very highly rated uh, engraver. So um, I, would, I would definitely recommend this one. Of course, it's expensive. So um, I'll, uh, I'll put a link to, um, to uh, Lindsay, the Lindsay Air Graver um, site here. It's got lots of great stuff. Like it actually has videos and tutorials on teaching you how to engrave. Um, all the setup here, so really, really good stuff. And and Steve, Steve Lindsay, um, I actually reached out to him over email when I was thinking about this, and he really helped me out and and told me what I needed and how to get started. So um, I appreciate that. So he's a good guy. So I'm gonna put something in the vise, and um, I'll just show you some real basics of engraving, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm all set up with my work in the vise. Uh, I've got my graver plugged in, my engraver. Um, and I'm not sure if you can, you can hear that buzzing. So it's, um, I've got the idle set kind of high right now and I've got my foot on the foot pedal and it's off. So now I'm gonna press the foot pedal and you're gonna hear what's gonna happen. So that's the piston going um, uh, up and down a little faster. So what I'm gonna do is just put the graver down. I'm gonna, so I'm not gonna push really with the engraver. What I'm gonna do is just put my fingers down and I'm gonna let the piston do the work here. So you'll see what's gonna happen. Okay, and you see it put a little um, mark there. I'm gonna put a little one beside it. See, I dug down a little bit on that one, so I'm gonna just do that again, dig down and you'll see that I can make it a little wider uh, as well. Okay. And uh, I'll zoom in on this so you guys can see this a little better. So now I'm going to just turn the vise a little bit as I'm uh, I'm doing the the engraving. Sorry, the compressor came on there. Um, so uh, I think you get the idea. I'm going to, uh, I'll do a couple more just so you see um, maybe some different techniques. But again, I'm a total beginner at this, so don't expect to learn how to engrave from me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try just doing my TK logo. I need a sample here to look at. I'll do it off of uh, memory here.
Okay. Well, <laughs> not very... Uh, uh, it kind of looks like my logo. All right, I'm going to try a bit of copper because that's what I'm do. I'm going to do for the sword. And they do recommend not doing, not using really really thin stock. And this is um, like 0.049, so it's probably not the best. It's going to chatter a little bit, but we'll see. There we go, folks, my primitive attempt at uh, my logo and the shark. You can see I got the basics down, and that's about it. But um, some of the most important things about this craft is the designs. And um, <laughs> spending a lot of time designing something, and I've started to, in my spare time, sketch scroll work in uh, acanthus leaves which is like these kind of of leaves here you see these are acanthus leaves which is very popular for engraving so the design work is as important as the engraving itself um, so i'm again just a novice i i love playing with it and you're going to see more of this in my work soon thanks for joining me on this intro to engraving folks i hope you got something out of it uh, there's links to my equipment down in the description, so go check those out. Um, and you'll get lots more information on engraving from uh, the Lindsay uh, Air Graver site. Some really good tools there if you want to get into engraving. Um, I know I'm going to be doing a lot more of it. Uh, it does take a while to learn, so you know I've got a learning curve and uh, on both the engraving and the design side. What I do for the sword is probably going to be relatively basic, um, but it'll get my feet wet in engraving. Thanks for joining me, folks. We'll see you on the next one.